This is a stepper motor and this is a servo motor. One does precise movements, the other not so much, but it always knows where it's at. Imagine if you could combine them in some way to get all those features at once. Well, turns out you can, but those guys cost a lot. So then imagine getting roughly all those features, plus some gear reduction that will make it strong enough to lift stuff, but at a much lower cost. This is basically the task I set for myself in the last video, where I made the first prototype of the 3D printable gearbox. It was a great success in terms of high precision and minimum backlash, but overall it was not that useful since it didn't have position feedback and there were some issues with the design. Now I am ready to get this right. A 3D printed gearbox with position feedback that is precise and powerful and without backlash. I have made a new design that hopefully satisfies all of that. So let's make it. So that is the base and as you can see it turned out very nice but it was this part I had the most problems with. In the design I made a good decision to not drill the screws directly into the plastic but actually put some um, nuts in here and this way you can assemble and disassemble this many times. In printing this I thought I needed to use support material to keep these holes up and I probably did. It just turned out it's so hard to remove so I ended up having to force these in. As you can see it's not very pretty. So that's a thing to improve on in another design. I'm thinking threaded inserts might be the coolest way to solve this. Hey, it's me from the future. I actually went and changed the design to feature threaded inserts like these ones here. It's definitely the best and most elegant solution. Just thought I'd let you know. Back to the assembly. Another feature of the base are these mounting holes that we didn't have in the last version as you can see. Only these crappy holes to look inside. But no way to mount this so if you want to use this on some kind of contraption you couldn't. These inserts are much easier to make because you can see the nut all the way through. I spaced the holes um, 16 millimeters in every direction and these holes are just missing so you got 16 and then 32 and 16 again here. So a regular pattern on both sides. And the reason I use this distance is because I have a lot of these aluminium extrusions which happen to have that exact dimensions. Another feature of the base is this little thing in here and it's actually a mounting point for another piece. It's this one as you can see here. This is a 3D printed little piece and we have got a Hall effect sensor embedded in this one. So the idea is that this just comes up here and slides uh, like this onto this. I'll just tack this in place like this. So now we have a Hall effect sensor in the shell. And we will use that to make it possible to zero the position of the motor every time we turn it on. This is the output gear and this will go like here. And it has a little neodymium magnet in here that can be detected by the Hall effect sensor. So let's install the motor. The next step is to get the small pulley on here. The next part is to install the first sliding part that goes in here. And as you can see, I have been making this hole a lot bigger. And that's because when we have a sliding part like this, I will actually be able to use this hole to feel the tension of the belts and inspect the gearbox. I thought that was a very neat solution compared to um, this. To install this, we are going to need some long M3 bolts like these ones. So the next part we are installing is the compound gear and to keep this nice in place I have this steel axle here which will be held in place by the two ball bearings here so it can rotate freely but also is not moving around. So this will go down here. 
Let's pause this assembly for a moment and move on to the top, which consists of the same sliding mechanism and an indentation here for holding the ball bearing. And it just pops in right here. And I've printed this other piece and it pops on just like this. And now we can install the other slider. Here we've got the output shaft and it consists of two things. This is the inner part. We have got 60 teeth gear, there's a magnet and there's a ball bearing which will uh, fit on top of the stepper motor to provide stability in these directions here. And this top half here fits into the ball bearing just like this. And this connects to the outside part, which is this one. It has got a big plate. We have got 32 by 16 here for mounting these standard sized extrusions. And then we can actually move on to the next phase, assembling the whole thing. Alright, so now we've got all the nuts in place and this is actually assembled. And as you can see, or here, it's not really working that well. And that is because we haven't tensioned these belts in here. The way to do this is to like work your way a little bit on each side. So we don't like go um, all too crazy on the axle. And um, it's fairly straightforward because we have these screws here. beginning to feel very tight. If I rotate this fast, there's no belt skipping. So you can, maybe we can see it in here like this. This runs very smooth. It feels sturdy and very nice. So I think this is the assembly done and we can move on to some testing. Yeah, this will be nice. All right, so this is the first test setup. And here we will be testing the homing function, which is a piece of code that I've written. This function basically strives to position this output shaft at the exact same orientation every time. I've positioned this centering ruler right at that point, so we can see how far off we are in either direction. And if this goes very well, we will be right at this point every time. Let's see how it goes. Next up we are testing the backlash and we did this as well in the last video where we found close to zero backlash in the first version of the gearbox. So let's see how the second version performs. And I'm just going to grab the output arm here and try to move it in both directions. And as you can see it, it's willing to go about a half a centimeter in each direction. But notice how it's not loose, it's more springy, so every time I let go it springs back to this position, which means that we have very little backlash, but some springiness in the system. And this is probably caused by the belts and the gears and the whole thing being made out of plastic. But what I'm very excited about is the fact that we, if we drive this to this position, it will actually be in that position and not like on one of the edges of the gears. Let's move on and see how this performs under some load. The first test we'll be doing is to determine the holding torque. It's basically a measurement of how much force you can apply at a certain distance from the center, how much weight can we put on here before it skips some steps. And in this test I'll be using a 500 gram weight, which is this simple bottle. Let's start by putting it here. Cool. 
It seems to support the weight here, so let's move it further out. It's definitely pulling it down, but it seems to hold all right. So let's go to the extreme. That's quite impressive. It seems to hold the 500 grams at a distance of roughly 35 centimeters from the center. That's very nice. Should we go further? Or is it... Oh yeah. Yeah. That's pretty conclusive. It was definitely pushing the limits. So let's say that at 35 centimeters from the center we can support 500 grams. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so one thing was the holding torque, but how much weight can we have on this while it's moving? At this angle we are applying the most force to the motor, so if we are able to move up and down here, that should generalize to the whole way around. So let's try moving it. It seems to work fine, so let's move further out. Very nice, let's try again. Okay, so it looked like that we maybe, maybe not missed a step here. That's hard to see. It's calculation time. In the test we saw that the arm could support 500 grams with an arm length of 35 centimeters. This gives us a holding torque of 17.5 kilogram centimeters. We also tested the maximum torque on the movement. And to be fair, I think it was beginning to lose some steps when we went above 25 centimeters from the center. Using that result, we get a maximum torque of 12.5 kilogram centimeters. Okay, let's sum everything up. After modifying the base to feature threaded inserts, the issue with inserted nuts has now been fixed. And overall, the 3D printed parts assemble very smoothly and everything works fully as intended. So I think this must be the final design. Incorporating a Hall Effect sensor seems like a viable solution for homing the gearbox. And the test confirms that it does this very consistently. So big thumbs up here as well. Just like the first prototype, we have achieved close to zero backlash and rigidity in all directions. So this is still very good. In terms of power, I think the gearbox has a decent amount of torque for a lot of projects. So all in all, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Now I have a very handy and powerful precision gearbox for all sorts of robotics projects and the like. If you want to make it yourself, you definitely can. I have published all the STL files on Thingiverse and the link is in the description. To end the video, here's some fun ways to use the gearbox that really shows off how smooth it operates. Thanks a lot for watching, consider subscribing for more cool projects. I'll see you in the next one. Wow.